Once again, welcome to the Iglesia Ni Cristo and the Bible, a program brought to you by the Iglesia Ni Cristo or the Church of Christ. Friends, we hope you'll accept our invitation to once again join us as we study the pure doctrines of the Holy Scriptures. In today's episode, we will find out in the Holy Scriptures how we can prepare for the nearing day of judgment. Friends, we often hear from our guests in our evangelical missions or Bible studies why we believe in a judgment day and why we often say that this day is truly very near. Also, they ask why we always call the attention of everyone to prepare for that day of judgment. Redwell, our friends may ask whether we have a biblical basis in saying so, and uh, it would be better if we shared to our friends and viewers what the Bible says regarding that day. Well, we can begin by reading, for example, the warning given in the book of the prophet Zephaniah. Friends, in chapter 1, the verses are 14 down to 15, as well as verse 18. The great day of the Lord is near, very near, and coming fast that they will be bitter, for even the bravest soldiers will cry out in despair. It will be a day of fury, a day of trouble and distress, a day of ruin and destruction, a day of darkness and gloom, a black and cloudy day, on the day when the Lord shows His fury, not even all their silver and gold will save them. The whole earth will be destroyed by the fire of His anger. He will put an end a sudden end to everyone who lives on earth. Friends, the Bible describes the great day of the Lord as a bitter day of destruction, a day of trouble, a day of distress, a day of ruin and destruction, a day of darkness as well as gloom. And we hope our friends notice that the Bible also says, we're able, that that day of the Lord is very near and fast approaching. Yes. Now, on that day, what will the Lord God do? Well, the prophet Zephaniah tells us that the Lord God is going to show His fury by destroying the whole earth by means of fire. Now, let us further share this to our friends and viewers. What are some of the signs uh, mentioned in the Holy Scriptures that prove that that day of the Lord is truly very near and fast approaching? Well, some of the signs are recorded even in the Old Testament itself. For example, in the book of Ezekiel. Friends, let's turn to that book, the book of Ezekiel, chapter 7. Let me share with you what's recorded in verses 5 down to 8, as well as verse 15. And we quote, This is what the sovereign Lord is saying. One disaster after another is coming on you. It's all over. This is the end. You are finished. The end is coming for you people who live in the land. The time is near when there will be no more celebrations at the mountain shrines, only confusion. Very soon now, you will feel all the force of my anger. I am judging you for what you have done, and I will pay you back for all your disgusting conduct. There is fighting in the streets and sickness and hunger in the houses. Anyone who is out in the country will die in the fighting, and anyone in the city will be a victim of sickness and hunger. Friends, the Lord God Himself tells us by means of His prophets that when the time of the end is near, well, the Bible says one disaster after another will come. It will cause confusion among the people. And not only that, we are also warned of fighting in the streets, of sickness, and not just that again, but also of hunger. And uh, no one can deny, Brother Edwell, that these signs are really taking place today. Yes. Now, what does the Lord God remind the people of this world with regards to the present condition, the present situation of this world? Well, the Lord God said He is doing it. He is judging people for all the disgusting conduct, all the disgusting things that they have done. Therefore, the terrible things spoken of by the Holy Scriptures and are experienced by many today are all consequences of man's sins. But not just that. These things that we see happening all around us also point to the fact that the day of judgment or the day of God's fury is truly fast approaching. That's true, Redl. Friends, was this the only instance when the Bible or the Holy Scriptures recorded the signs that warn of the coming day of judgment? Redl, let us further find out. What are some of the signs given by the Holy Scriptures that further prove that the day of judgment is truly very near? Well, for that, we now go to the New Testament. And we'll read 
what the Lord Jesus Christ himself had to say. It's recorded in the book of Luke. Friends, let's read chapter 21. The verses are 11 and 27. There will be terrible earthquakes, famines and plagues everywhere. There will be strange and terrifying things coming from the sky. Then the Son of Man will appear coming in a cloud with great power and glory. Among the signs given by the Lord Jesus Christ that warn of the coming day of judgment are famines, earthquakes, as well as plagues. And there is also no question, Bradle, that these signs also took place in the past and continue to take place even during these times. Yes. But while the day of judgment means distress, anguish, destruction for those against whom the Lord God is furious, what does the nearing day of the end mean for God's true servants? The exact opposite of what it means for those who are not servants of the Lord God. Those who are not servants of the Lord God, they are facing, sad, sad to say, they are facing destruction, punishment. But that is not what is going to happen to the true Christians. Friends, let's go back to that same book, the book of Luke, chapter 21. This time, let's read verse 28. Again, we're reading to you the words of the Lord Jesus Christ, and this is what he said. When these things begin to happen, stand up and raise your heads, because your salvation is near. Friends, through the signs we've read about, well, the Lord Jesus Christ wants us to know that the day of salvation for all true servants of the Father and of the Lord Jesus Christ, that they truly is very near, it is fast approaching. And there is no question, Br. Edel, that earthquakes, famine, sickness, hunger, and violence by themselves, these things already cause distress and uh, sadness. Remember, true Christians also learn to look beyond these distressing events and raise their heads in anticipation of the nearing day of the Lord. Why is that? Remember, for true Christians, that day of judgment is a great day of salvation. But the question, Br. Edel, is who can be certain of being included among those for whom the day of judgment is a day of redemption, a day of salvation, and not of destruction? Well, those who are redeemed, who are purchased with the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, they're the ones who are assured of the grace of salvation. And now who these people are, are introduced to us by the Apostle Paul. In the book of Acts, dear friends, here in chapter 20, the verse is 28, here are the words of the Apostle Paul. Take heed therefore to yourselves and to all the flock over which the Holy Spirit has appointed you overseers to feed the church of Christ which he has purchased with his blood. Friends, those who have been redeemed, those who have been purchased in the Christian era, they are found inside the church of Christ. And of course, this is the true church of Christ. But Bredo, why are we so certain that if a person is included among those whom the Lord Jesus Christ purchased with his blood, then that person is... Uh, certain that the day of judgment is a day of salvation for that person and not of destruction? That's a very good question. And of course, we have proof of that. And again, we go back to the testimony of the Apostle Paul to answer that question. Friends, let's read from the book of Romans this time. Here in chapter 5, let me share with you what's recorded here in verse 9. Since we have now been justified by His blood, how much more shall we be saved from God's wrath through him. Friends, if you notice from the testimony of the Apostle Paul, well, those who have been redeemed, those who have been purchased by means of the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, well, they are assured that they will be saved. Saved from what? The Apostle Paul tells us, from the wrath of the Lord God, the Father in heaven. In other words, they will no longer be included among those who are in distress. Friends, in distress because of uh, the fury and destruction that will be felt on the nearing day of judgment. And this is exactly the reason we always invite you, dear friends, seek out the true church. The true church of Christ purchased with the blood of the Savior. And may you please include this church, the Iglesia Ni Cristo or the Church of Christ, among the churches that you will examine. Friends, when we return, we will find out in the Holy Scriptures what the members of the true church are required to do so as to be assured of receiving the grace of salvation on the nearing day of judgment. We hope you'll stay with us.
We're so happy you could stay with us. Friends, we learned that those who have been redeemed, those who have been purchased through the precious blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, are assured that they will be saved from the wrath of the Lord God on the nearing day of judgment. But, Brother Edwell, like what we have mentioned a while back, what are the members of the true Church of Christ required to do so as to be assured of receiving the grace of salvation on the nearing day of judgment? Well, among the many requirements or commandments made upon a member of the true Church, one is that we should never allow our faith or even our love to ever grow cold. Let's read about that. It's spoken by the Lord Jesus Christ in the book of Matthew, in fact. In chapter 24, the verses are 9 down to 13. Here are the words of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Then you will be arrested and handed over to be punished and be put to death. All mankind will hate you because of me. Many will give up their fate at that time. They will betray one another and hate one another. Then many false prophets will appear and fool many people. Such will be the spread of evil that many people's love will grow cold. But whoever holds out to the end will be saved. Friends, what I have just read to you are the words of the Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior. Now, if you notice, he was speaking to members of the genuine church. These are genuine Christians. And he was issuing them a warning. Now, what was that warning about? Well, according to him, a true Christian is to guard against growing cold, not only in his faith, but also in his love. But why do they have to do so, Brother Edward? Well, again, according to our Savior, only if a true Christian endures or holds out until the end is successful in upholding his membership in the true church, only then will that person be assured of the grace of salvation. But how can a true Christian, Bredel, guard against the danger of growing cold or losing one's faith and love? Again, we go to the words of the Lord Jesus Christ to answer that question. We can read what he said in the book of Mark. In chapter 4, dear friends, let me share with you what's recorded. Here in verses 16 down to 17, and let me also read to you verse 19. Other people are like the seeds that fall on rocky ground. As soon as they hear the message, they receive it gladly. But it does not sink deep into them, and they don't last long. So when trouble or persecution comes because of the message, they give up at once. But the worries about this life, the love for riches, and all other kinds of desires crowd in and choke the message, and they don't bear fruit. Friends, Based on these words of the Lord Jesus Christ, love and faith grow cold when a servant of the Lord God becomes preoccupied with the worries of this life. For example, with the desire to become rich or with the troubles or the persecution that one encounters as he travels in this world. Because based on what you just read, Bert Edel, this choked the message or the gospel and they no longer bear fruit in their life. So friends... We should be careful. But please, don't get us wrong. We're not saying that a true Christian should no longer work or should no longer study or take care of one's family and future. No. These are also in keeping with the Lord God's teachings and commandments recorded in the Holy Scriptures. But friends, we should learn how to handle these concerns. Now, how should we handle these concerns so that they don't choke our faith rendering us vulnerable to the punishment that awaits non-servants of the true Lord God on the nearing day of judgment. Well, to answer that question, we turn to the testimony of the Apostle Paul. There's something he said, and it's recorded in the book of First Corinthians. Friends, in chapter 7, the verses 31, we quote what the Apostle Paul said to all true Christians. Those in frequent contact with the things of the world should make good use of them, without becoming attached to them. For this world and all it contains will pass away. If you notice, true Christians are told to make good use of the things of this world without becoming attached to them. And so, well, there's nothing wrong, for example, with studying or with working hard, as well as other similar pursuits. A true Christian always remembers this world and everything it contains will pass away. And since we're sharing this with our friends, we hope that even if a person is not yet counted among true Christians, he will take what the Bible says seriously. This merely means, Brother Edward, that if we are so focused on the worldly pursuits to the exclusion of uh, 
seeking out the true church introduced by the Holy Scriptures, as well as living out the true faith and love, then we are also in danger of uh, passing away together with this world. And not only that, we are in placing ourselves in danger of suffering what the prophet Zephaniah was describing a while back. People shouting out in despair and distress on the day when the Lord God's fury is finally poured out on the earth. That's true, Rebel, because on that fateful day, not even gold or silver or any material thing can save a person from the wrath of the Lord God or from destruction. Yes. Now, is that all that can make one's faith grow cold, Brother That's not all that can make a, a person's faith and even his love grow cold. In fact, sin itself can do that to a person. How is that? Well, we can read what the Bible says in the book of Isaiah in chapter 59. The verses are 11 down to 12. This is what we can read, dear friends. We are frightened and distressed. We long for God to save us from oppression and wrong, but nothing happens. Lord, our crimes against you are many. Our sins accuse us. We are well aware of them all. Again, friends, members of the nation of the Lord God, in this case, for example, in the Christian era, they're the members of the true church. They are required to completely renew their lives. And how does one do that? It's by staying away from every form of sin. But there is no denying the fact, Brad, Edel, that temptation is all around us. So let us yes. find out in the Holy Scriptures how can true servants of the Lord God overcome temptations or sins? Well, the Apostle Peter has something to say about that. And let's read what he said. The book of 1 Peter, dear friends, chapter 4, the verses are 1 down to 2. And let me also read to you verse 7. Therefore, since Christ suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves also with the same mind. For he who has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin that he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh for the lusts of men, but for the will of God. But the end of all things is at hand. Therefore, be serious and watchful in your prayers. We hope you notice, dear friends, true servants of the Lord, true Christians, they are told to be watchful in prayer as well as to live according to the will of the Lord God. And we know that the will of the Lord God, of course, is recorded in the Holy Scriptures. This merely means, Brother we ought to make sure that we abide by the teachings and commandments of the Lord God. Yes. Friends, but what if someone says that he's already living a prayerful life, a blameless or spotless life free from sin, and that because of this, he's already assured of salvation, even though or even without having to enter into the Lord Jesus Christ church. Friends, would that really be enough to prepare someone for the nearing day of judgment? We hope you'll stay with us for the answer. You're still watching the Iglesia Ni Cristo and the Bible. Friends, we learned that true servants of the Lord God are told to be watchful in prayer and to live according to the will and commandments of the true Lord God. But, Brother what if someone says that he's already living a prayerful life, blameless, spotless life, free from sin, and that because of this, that person firmly believes in that he is already assured of receiving the grace of salvation on the nearing day of judgment, even without having to enter the church headed by the Lord Jesus Christ. Let us share this to our friends and viewers. Would that really be enough to prepare someone for the nearing return of the Savior? To answer that question, let's turn to what the Apostle Peter himself said. In the book of Second Peter, friends, let me read to you chapter 3. The verses are 13 down to 14. Nevertheless, we, according to His promise, 
Look for a new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. Therefore, beloved, looking forward to these things, be diligent to be found by him in peace without spot and blameless. Friends, those who are aware that judgment day is near, those who look forward to the return of the Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior, they are exhorted to strive to be found not only without spot, not only blameless, but if you notice, the Apostle Peter said, they should also be found in peace. What is that peace, Brother Edel, and how can one partake of that peace? Well, the Apostle Paul this time, he explains what that peace is that all of us should be found in. It's recorded in the book of Colossians chapter 3. Let's read verse 15, dear friends. Again, the testimony of the Apostle Paul. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to which also you were called in one body, and be thankful. The Bible proves to us we ought to possess the peace of the Lord God before the end arrives. And please take note, this peace, according to the Apostle Paul, it has been given to those who are found in the one body. Now, which is this one body, Brother Edel, in which true peace can be found? That's a very good question, of course, because we all want to be prepared for the nearing day of, of salvation. So, the Apostle Paul, he himself explains where or what that one body is. Again, it's in the book of Colossians, but this time we read from chapter 1, the verse is 18. And he is the head of the body, the church. Did you notice, dear friends? The Apostle Paul clearly declared that the one body is none other than the church. Now, which church is this? It's the one headed by the Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior Himself. And, Brother Edel, the name of this church, of which the Lord Jesus Christ is the head, is Church of Christ. And, dear friends, that's not our own opinion. Let me read to you how the Apostles call or how they introduce this church of which the Lord Jesus Christ is the head. Let me read what is recorded here in the book of Ephesians in chapter 4 and the verse is 12. The common object of their labor was to bring the Christians maturity, so prepare them for Christian service and the building up of the church of Christ, the one body or church of which the Lord Jesus Christ is the head according to what we read, is called and introduced by the apostles, Church of Christ. Again, we remind you that the one true church introduced by the Holy Scriptures should be named after the name of the head. And since the head of the true church is none other than our Lord Jesus Christ, it is only but fitting and proper, dear friends, to call the one true church, Church of Christ. And friends, this is our continuing invitation to all of you. Seek out the true church of Christ, the true church redeemed by the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's remember, we ought to strive to find, we ought to enter that true church in order to be prepared, in order to be ready for that nearing day of judgment. Because friends, come judgment day, if we are found inside the true church, remaining steadfast members of it, upholding our faith, upholding love for the Lord God, well, that day of judgment will truly, will surely be a great day of salvation for all of us. Friends, thank you so much for joining us in this episode of the Iglesia Ni Cristo and the Bible. We hope that you have once again learned from the truth which we presented to you, which are, of course, based on the teachings of the Lord God recorded in the Holy Scriptures. If you'd like to know more about this church, you can reach us through email or you can come and visit our houses of worship and talk to our ministers or evangelical workers. But for now, please join us in a short prayer of thanksgiving and praises. Our most gracious and most loving Father in heaven. Yes, Father. Thank you so very much for giving us this blessed chance. Yes, Father. So once again, learn your words of truth. Yes, Father. Recorded in the Holy Scriptures. Amen. May you please bless all of us, dear God. Yes, Father. Especially our friends and viewers. Yes, Father. Please add to them the firm faith and conviction. Yes, Father. So that we may all be joined together in preparing for the nearing day of judgment. Yes, Father. And that is by joining the true church of Christ. Yes, Father. Abiding by all your teachings and commandments. Amen. 
Lord Jesus, we do not forget to pray unto yes, you. Yes, it is because you are our Lord and mediator to the Father. Yes, Lord. Please, once again, speak to him in our behalf yes, Lord. and cleanse us from all filthiness of the flesh. Amen. Lord God, once again, we approach you through this humble prayer. Yes, Father. Please continue to bless this program yes, Father. so that more and more people may come to the knowledge of the truth and be saved on the nearing return of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord God, we firmly believe that you have hearkened our supplications yes, Lord. because we beg all of these things yes, in Lord. the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.